Hey everybody, welcome back to Creature Caravans. Now I'm about to continue from where I left off, and if you want to see the basics of how the game works and how I got where I am, you might want to hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the links down in the show notes to go to the main run through where I introduce all the basic gameplay. But if you're ready for more caravanning action, then welcome back to RZM. Okay, we're in round three, and I'm trying to decide, should I re-roll? I literally got a straight. One, two, three, four, five. No sixes. But it's not like I have anything that needs a six. This is a nice bit of variety. I mean, in a perfect world, you just want to roll, um, you know, Yahtzee of sixes. Just nothing but sixes, because that means you can do anything. Higher value dice are better. Um, but it's not like there aren't plenty of things you can do with low value dice, too. Uh, it just means... More likely, if you get a bunch of low-value dice, you're going to be standing still. Unless maybe you've got some ways to move with lower-value dice. Do I want to re-roll? No, I'm pretty happy. Uh, it's, it's a nice spread. I'm just going to leave it alone. So, what do I want to get done this turn? I would like to move two steps, please, so I can get to this zombie. Um, because the uh, if I when, when the first time I fight a zombie, I choose from this whether they are a level 5 zombie, or a level 14 zombie, or a level 22 zombie. I, I get to choose. Basically, it's however much combat strength I've got, I will beat whichever zombie I want. Now... Um, I only have one combat, which means the best I can do is if I put a 5 on the combat, I could beat the basic... Uh, I guess you should call them a level 1 zombie, because they're worth one victory point. Whereas if I rolled a 6, I could beat the 2. And if I want to beat any of these other things, I need to get more combat cards in play, like my opponent does, because they, um, you put a die here, and it can increase your overall combat. Right. So, I'm mostly, I just want to move up and fight. I, even if it's just a little one, it's worth a point, but it's worth 2 points, because it'll get rid of that wound. But even more than that, I'd want to get over here, which is forward and up, so I can get that treasure chest. But then I'm surrounded by a bunch of mountains, which would slow well, would slow anybody else down, but not me, baby, because I've got a bat rider, so I can uh, move no problem. So those are what I'm thinking about doing. So I am thinking about holding on to this five for the fight, if I want to do that, which means no more double food. But what am I going to play? I want to get this Bird Folks Mystics played as fast as I can because they let me um, add two to my dice. That's what I need to be doing. And I need normally six food, but remember, because of my Sage, I only need uh, five. And I'll get another card every time I play a Magic character. So I've got three. So how about, for starters, uh, I'm going to use this five over here and get two more food. So sorry, zombies. No, or you know, congratulations, zombies! You avoided a fight, which means I guess I want to head up there and get that treasure chest. All right, so I've got five food as a free action. I'm going to play five for my discount of the mystic. Every turn, I can raise dice by two, and that's right now. I could turn these remaining ones that I have not used into other stuff. So I can still turn this four into a five, which means then I could still beat the zombie if I want to move forward. Right, and what else might I want to play? Whew. So I need a coin to get this Fire Bison, uh, which is just another magic, which is the main thing I care about, and points. Because it's free. I don't need food. I just need a coin. Uh, I don't want to give up three cards to get a coin, though. But when I play this Toad Folk Musician, I immediately get a coin, which means then I could immediately play the Fire Bison effectively for free. And I get a four that lets me draw two cards. And I can put the fruit on here so that anything would let me draw two cards. So that's an interesting thing, too. Although I was saving my fruit for the Night Maiden. Hmm. Do, do, can I, can I, can I, can I get this done? I would need two trade goods and um, two food because this is a magical character and I've got that magic discount. Uh, well, or, or, am I happy... With, yeah, hey, I've, played, I've taken three turns. I've played three cards. That's not bad. Maybe I should just move it, move it, which is what we are here to do. I have mentioned that on more than one occasion. So I could use this three over here to move one step. And then I could use any two dice to move a step or uh, two or greater to move in any direction. I will use these two dinky little dinkum dice to move an extra step and end up there. Right. So if I set up camp here, I'm going to get a treasure, which means even though I could keep moving, I could use the Bat Riders and move through the mountains. I'm going to wait. So I've still got this. And remember, I can increase uh, two dice by one. So I could turn this into a five or a six. Um, and I might as well turn it into a five, because then that means I could draw three and keep one. Or do I just want to um, get another... What should I call it? Trade goods, so I could do some more trade. Um, and remember, oh, I do need trade goods to get this into play. 
So actually, I'm not even going to bother using my new power. I'm just going to use the four. Remember, I told you I was happy with it. And get a trade good um, so that I'm one step closer to getting this in play, which will get me the other thing in play for free. All righty. So that was that for me. Easy peasy. And now let's see where my opponent's going to go. And remember, if I were playing a multiplayer game, they just would have rolled their own dice. They would have been making their own choices about what they play. There's almost no direct interaction between players. I think there's a few cards with a few powers that let you, like, give stuff to each other, or if a player's in a thing, you can do a thing. But for the most part, this is a multiplayer solitaire game, folks. And it goes so fast, because everybody's going at the same time. Although you don't have to. If you wanted, you could. everybody could wait till my turn is over, and then they could take their turn, but then it would take two, three, or four times as long. And it just zips along really quick. If you trust your opponents not to cheat, I suppose. But you know what I always say about that, folks. If you don't trust your uh, the people you play with, find new people to play with. Anyway, though, so let's see what my opponent's going to do. All right. Hey, they got a pair of ones, so they're going to do this. They did not get a pair of fours, fives, or sixes, though. They have a two and a five and a six. So they're using all their dice. They're not wasting any on combat. Okay, so first of all, uh, they're going to do this. Move two forward, boom, boom, and two up. And interestingly, me, when I move through zombie zones, I take damage. They do not. Uh, they, they know all the shortcuts. So, all right. And then, move forward one and down one. Oh, they caught up with me just like that after a, a slow start. Then, get another fruit. Oh, they love that juicy fruit. All righty. Why am I having such a hard time finding fruit tokens? I know I've got a million over there. There we go. All righty. And then, draw five. Keep one with the highest victory point value if tied, choose... Um, right. So, one, two, three, four, five. All righty, highest victory. That's an eight. That's an eight. All right, so they're going to take one of these uh, because, again, they're ignoring the modifiers. And, um, right, okay, I wouldn't want them to have more combat ability, but neither of these, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just go on ahead. And, um, oh, wait, though. They do want nocturnal characters, and they want folk. This is nocturnal folk. I am not going to give them that card. I'm going to say they're going to get the fruit collectors. All righty, so all they got was eight points out of that. Fine. All right, so that was it for them. That is what they did. We are on. Oh, and we set up camp, and I get a treasure. And what did I get? Uh, just two points. It could have been one point and a trade good. I'd, I'd get the point at the end, and I'd get the trade good immediately. Or it could have been one point and a coin. But as it was, it was. Oh, no, I can't even find it. Where was it? It was two points. All righty. So, if, you know, and so you can't ever be sure how many points everybody has, um, even if you can see all their cards, because if you got a lot of treasures, that could translate into more stuff. That's kind of a bummer. I was really hoping for one point and a coin or something like that. Oh, well. Two points is two points. But this is a high-scoring game, folks. You know, 140, 160 points. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bummed by that. Okay. Say la vie. So, um, oh, and they set up camp as well. Boop. And we're on to the next round. Here we go. Whee. All righty. And am I going to re-roll? Remembering, of course, that I can add two... Uh, I can increase two pips. And, uh... You can tell you, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I've got. All right, so let's just go with this. I mean, I'd hate to re-roll and get a bunch of lower dice. Because I can... I could get a six out of this. I can get a couple of fives with my power. I think I'm okay. So, where are we going? What are we doing now? Well, um... Got to keep heading east. Although, it wouldn't be bad to come up here. Because if you come to these white towers and set up camp there, that is a way you can get cards really fast. I forget. I think you draw three cards if you spend the night at one of those towers. So that's always very, very nice. It's like the main way to get new cards. Uh, other than, you know, slow drip feeding of them over here. So do I want to? But then, if I'm moving up and down, I am not moving farther east. And this would be one, two, three steps. So I could easily get up there. Well, I could you know, move into the mountain space, and then I could move into planes. And then, uh, so with uh, one, two, three, four of my five dice, I could get up there and get a bunch more cards. And remember, cards are three cards are coins. One, every one card is a uh, food. And I'm thinking it wouldn't hurt to get some combat. Actually, okay, let's just uh, take inventory. I need, what is this thing again? It is, I need four flyers. And this is one, two, three. So I'm going to need one more flyer to get these eight points before the game is up. And this one is five magic. That's one, two, three, four. So I'm going to need to find another magic card and get that into play before the game is over if I want to score that eight points and that eight points. So I do need to be drawing more cards. So that makes it a little bit more attractive. But on the other hand, I could just keep going and hit this tower over there. 
Um, or I could keep my man down here and do and try and get a better treasure chest than the last time. Plus, I got to think further ahead. Hey, there's some more fruit, um, which I don't need them yet, but I will eventually need that to put that fruit to good use. So, hmm. All right, each one of these is only drawing one card. I would like to get some more cards in hand. And this tower is one, two, three, four, five steps away. Plus, if I come here and then I end here, I could get some more fruit as well. Yeah, I think it's time to head north. Go north, young caravan. So, let's go on ahead and use this to, to uh, fly right into here. Players don't block each other. Multiple players can camp in the same spot. It's all fine. So, that was one step. And then, let's use this uh, three over here to come out here. And now, I need to move up one. And this is kind of painful, using two dice to move one step. But none of these other ones... Le or no, if I, if I could get this into play, I could um, move much more readily. But I need one trade good and... And, um, and oh, they're not even magic, so I need the full eight food. Ouch. All right, never mind. I'm just going to use two fours to uh, move that last step. And here's where we're going to set up camp. I'll go ahead and turn this four into a six with my mage power, which means with my last die, I can do whatever I want. And it's probably, you know, draw some or get a trade good or get some more food, saving up for this big one. If I'm saving up for this now, but where it was really, I was saving up for this. So because that could get that into play, or was it really quickly? But I mean, I could get that done anytime. It's just one coin. And this one, oh, but this is a way to draw cards fast, too. With fours, I could draw two cards instead of drawing one card at a time with ones and fives. <sighs> so, and this is magic, so I only need two food. So I could get the two food right now, or I could get the other trade good and then get the two food next time and get this into play in the fourth round. Yeah, okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get two more food. And remember, I can always get food by trashing cards, but I like all of these cards. I'm not trashing any of them. So I grab two food, and that is it. I'm not going to play anything more. So I am done. Oh, hey, wait a second. Hey, wait a second. Hey, wait a second. Did I do this? I don't think I did, folks. I, I know when I played the Magic Bird Folk Mystics, I gave myself the discount, right? Uh, but I did not draw a card. Remember, I get to draw a card every time I play a magic card. So I have Desert Mystics, who happen to be magic, and every turn, another one, and, oh, we want, uh, now I want shy cards. If I get this into play, it's eight points if I get some shy cards. And they themselves are not shy. And I don't think I have any shy cards. Hmm. This might be on, although this is the last, well, we'll see, we'll see. All right, so anyway, so that was that. I totally forgot. Folks, watch with Klingon subtitles. I'm sure Paula pointed out that I had forgotten that. Alrighty, <clears throat> so that was it for me. Let's see what uh, uh, Nizra is up to. Alrighty, so Nizra does not have a pair of fours, fives, or sixes, or ones. But she does have a two, and a three, and a four! She found a zombie! And then, so, these two dice can't, aren't fives or sixes. So, she's fought a zombie. She's gonna fight zombies! Oh no! Alrighty, first of all, move forward one, and down one. Alrighty, so that's done. Draw, oh, and this is the first time you've seen this. Draw until you can keep one card that matches one of the scoring opportunities. Now, if I draw six cards and do not find any Nocturnes, any Folk, um, or, let's see, oh no, this one's true, but it, you know that's not going to help. So it's just Nocturne and Folk, right? These other ones don't uh, have any other considerations. Yep, so it's just, so we draw six, and if we find Nocturne or Folk, they get them. Alrighty, that is uh, a tiny shy delver. Nope. One, two, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So, next up, is it a? It's a machine delver. So, nope. It's tiny shy. Wow, they're finding all these little. You know what? I'm starting to think that this is. Oops, sorry. That this is a placeholder piece of art too, because I've seen this one several times now. Alrighty, and let's see. Uh, folk, folk. Wait, oh, hey, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, folk. So they got this. So the other ones they did not take. And um, this has just basically it's one point for every two folk they've got. So they just basically got a half a point off of that. Although they also lost a point off of it as well. But they've also increased their combat ability, which is going to come in handy now. Because now, roll all the combat dice together. 
Whoa, 12. And then um, add one for every combat action. So 12, 13, 14 means they just took out this big bad zombie, which is worth seven points. Wow. Well, they're, they're going to have that. I am nowhere close. I mean, I can do one point of damage if I, you know, or I, I can do up to six points of damage if I get this out then I could put a six on here plus one. So I could potentially do it, but this is a long ways off from getting into play. So, um, boom, they just scored seven points off that big epic fight. Good for them. All right. And now at the end of the round, every, uh, you know, all these slide down. So I don't have much time left to fight that before it's gone. We camp and so do they. And remember if somebody sets up camp there, I'm pretty sure it's three cards. Yep, so I am just passively refilling my hand. And what did I get? Uh, some tiny magic shy grasskin weavers, some d uh, delver folk, and some more delver folk. All righty. So that was it. We are on to the next round. Here we go. All righty. And I kind of like that roll. Yeah, I don't think I need to re-roll at all. And this is going to be the turn where... What was I going to get? Oh, it's you, right? Because that'll give me the coin, which means I get to do that. But I mean, I got a long time to do that. And I'd still have to get the other. I would really, 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 really like to get this Night Maiden out sooner than later. It's eight food, total of eight food. I've got two. So I could give myself two more. I've got the one trade good. And how else am I going to get food? By trashing cards. And I did just get three cards. I got all those Delvers that didn't necessarily vibe with what I've got going on. So how about I get rid of those three cards I just got? Right? Um, although, man, if I get this Lizard Folk Delver into play, expensive, uh, nine food and a trade good. Uh, once per turn, I get to move up or down one space in either direction. It's worth three points. And I'm rolling six dice for the rest of the game. And you can imagine what a big deal that is. But they don't fly, and they're not nocturnal, and they're... Oh, they are folk. Do I care about folk? No, they care about folk over here. So, bye-bye. Ah, five dice is enough for me. And... Um... Bye-bye. And... Bye-bye, Lizard Folk Crafters. So those are the three. Easy come, easy go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just have to give up one more card, and I can get the Night Maiden into play. And, you know, um, this Desert Mystic is pretty expensive. We'll say goodbye to her. And, I mean, she wants Shy Folk. I don't have any Shy. So we'll take that. That's the last food. All that food, plus that trade good to get the Night Maiden into play. And let's give that Night Maiden some fruit. So instead of sixes to move, um, I can use anything to move. And it's through mountains or plains, so it doesn't help me move through water, the Night Maiden. But I get an extra move if I've got two Nocturnal, and I do. So this is, with one die, moving two steps. You can see why that is worth doing sooner than later. So let's go with that. Now, things are really going to start speeding up. With, with this single one... I can move two steps through plains and mountains. That's a pretty big deal. Nice. So, which way am I going to go? Well, I would like to hit over I would like to get over here and draw more cards, please. Uh, because that's just instant quick food if nothing else for my remaining cards, but I got to go right through some ember zombies. And maybe this time I fight and uh, take the opportunity to score some points and get rid of this wound. That might make sense. What was it? It's going to be one, two, three, four. Uh, and going through some tough terrain to do it. And I can move four. Two with my Night Magician, one with my Bat Rider, and then um, one more there. Yeah, that would do it. Let's let's make this a let's make this a move it, move it kind of time, shall we? And but the thing is, am I gonna use any of my dice to fight along the way? Okay, let's do that. Let's go on ahead and... Oh, this is painful. Use one of my sixes as a three to just move one step. And while I'm here, if I want to, I can fight. I'm going to use this other six to fight. Right? 
So, uh, and my strength is a six. If I put a three here, my strength would be a three. And if I had other cards that I could put combat on, I could combine multiple combats uh, to be able to hit bigger and harder. But I'm just going to hit this uh, dinky little six pointer over here, who is worth two points. But more importantly, whenever you successfully fight, you get rid of a wound. So that's really three points I made off of that die. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay. So, now, let's keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on moving all through the night. Let's use this 2 to get to move 2 spaces because of my Nocturnal Night Maiden. Um, and uh, the spaces can include mountains, so boom, boom. And then, let's take this... <gasps> no! Oh, but hey, remember, I get to add stuff. I'm going to add them both to this to turn this into a 3, which is more than enough to be able to move down here. Boom. That's how you do it. You can start to see, folks, things are speeding up. I'm getting more combos and whatnot, and I've got a very strong engine about movement. But it doesn't have to be. You could win this game not even making it to the third plateau if you're all about getting your points from all your cards you get in play. But remember, we're only playing 12 rounds, and you can only play 12 cards. Once you've played a card, unless a card says you get rid of it, you can't get rid of cards, even if they don't do you any good anymore. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So we have made it to the end. Uh, all right, no, we haven't. My buddy's going to go now. Whee! And let's see. They do not have a pair of fours, fives, or sixes. They do not have a pair of ones. So they've got a two and a three. And they didn't find any zombies and a five and a six. And so there they go. Move forward one, down one. Draw until they get another. And what was it? They want folk and, noc or folk and nocturne, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see if they find one. They found shy flyers. Nope. I would have liked that. Uh, they found tiny uh, flying magic. Nope. They found folk. All righty. So they've got an, uh, an extra point for that and an extra point because, what is it? It's uh, for every two folk, they get an extra point off their wheeled village. Their village is filling up full of folk. And um, they the solo player does not care about the special powers. They just care about, hey, did I get combat abilities? And do I get things that um, you know combine with other stuff? Right, okay, so that was it for them. Time to set up camp. Nobody can ever fight that again. Time is running out for other players to fight a level 6, though. And I've set up camp here, which means I get to draw one, two, three more cards. A one, two, three. Nice. And my buddy just sets up camp there. All righty, and I am once again in the lead. Let's take off, you hosers. Come on. Ooh, all righty. Four fours, which I could make two fives out of it, and I don't need any sixes. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to reroll. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I didn't even look at the new cards I got. Um, well, they're not particularly exciting art. Oh, that's pretty placeholder art. So, giant flying beetle riders. So this is a way, uh, and it's eight points if I've got five folk. Now, do I have any folk yet? I've got one, two. I've got two folk. So the Beetle Riders could um, add up some points, and they can let me move further, faster, farther. Alrighty, Nocturne Insect Trappers, eight points if I've got three tinies, and they themselves are not tiny. They want to don't they, they, they don't ask them why they want the tiny creatures in the caravan. These insect trappers and um, Knuckle Goats, who are tiny and shy, each turn re-roll one die, and they're worth five points if you got four or more tinies, and they themselves are tiny. So getting a re-roll. Although I've, I've been doing pretty good with my rolls so far. And being able to manipulate, I don't think I need those. I think this just might be three more food to feed the cards I already wanted. Because interestingly, you know, although the, no, the insect trappers are nocturnal, and I need a bunch of nocturnals still. So where am I going to go? What am I going to do next? All righty. Well, I've got uh, some tough terrain, but that's no problem for me. With the bat riding knight maiden, I can just get through this stuff no problem. And, uh, let's see, do I want to bother fighting anymore? Or do I want to kind of head down here and get another treasure? Or head down here and get another fruit? If I get that fruit, and then I turn this thing that needs a four into needing a one, that means I can start draw cards like nobody's business. Maybe it's time to get this night tree folk musician done. How was it? It's one, two, three, four. I would need to move four steps. And you saw me just do it. Four steps is definitely doable, even through tough terrain like this. And I could even avoid that zombie by uh, zigzagging like that. Right? So if I use my lowest value die, my three, and I get to move plus one because I have two nocturnal, I go um, one, two. Fine. Then I... Oh, wait. Oh, 
I can't, I can, but it's expensive. It's expensive. Use one of my fours to move here. And now I have to use two dice to move the last step. Ouch. So I only have one die to actually do anything with. But I am going to get fruit. Okay. So what am I going to do with that last die? Could I get you played? Do I just use this die to start building up so I can? I, I think so. I think I'm just going to do that. Get those trade goods again. And, you know, I mean, you could have an engine all about generating. You could have cards that let you just generate trade goods like crazy instead of really slow. And then just turn them into huge points and huge amounts of food over here in the market by doing the market action. So you can go for radically different overall strategies. But anyway, that was it for me. Just some moving, getting because I wanted that fruit. Meanwhile, Nizra in the Wheeled Village says, Hey, I got a pair again. And then I got a four and a five. And I got this one, which didn't, because um, they need two ones. All right, so complete the lowest available trade. Okay, they're going to trade again. And so that would be this one. Not much, because nobody's been doing much trade. But if I want to do this now, I don't have much time. There's a clock. Okay, and then they're skipping that, they're skipping that. They are going to fight, though. So they're going to roll the uh, four, five, six, which means... Oh, right, yes, which means they still have time. They got in before I froze it out. So that's two points. If I'd done it a little bit earlier, that but you know it's like a human player realizing oh, I'm almost out of time. I don't have time to do that. Alrighty. So that was it for them. And um they rolled their combat dice. Oh hey yes and then five get more fruits. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. And that's it. So these slide down and that's done. This slides down. I don't have much time to do that trade if I want to. Um, I set up camp here to get more fruit of my very own. There we go. And they set up camp. Oh, they didn't move at all, did they? So that is one point wasted because you can you can stand still and you better have a good reason to do it. So they've got two camping in the same spot because they did not move. And a human player might do that also. Okay, we're on to the next round. Still rolling five dice. Okay. Yep, that's fine with me. Alrighty, so I am going to use this one, my Night Maiden, to move one step here and one step here. And the question is, do I stay there so that I can get another treasure? I'm still kind of stinging for my lousy first treasure. I think I'm just going to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on moving. But again, I got to burn. I got, I, I can move one step, but then I got to burn. I got to burn three dice. But if I did. I'd get three more cards, and I'd be well on my way, and I'd be close to more fruit, or do I stay here to get a treasure? Because, I mean, that treasure could give me the trade goods and the coins I need. I don't want to throw away three cards to get a coin. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. I'm not going to move as much this turn. We're going to slow down and kind of focus more on getting, because I'd like to get this into play now, right? So let's do that with this. That gives me two, and that's all the food I need, because I've still got the magic discount. I need one more trade good, so let's just do, uh, that's a four right there. That gets me the trade good. And now all of this lets me play my fifth card, a, um, a toad stool, or to a toad folk musician. When I play this card, gain a coin immediately. Boom. And now I've got a, a place where I can draw cards. And I can always... Well, I, I don't need to do that right now because I can do this anyway. So let's not throw that... I mean, I might have something else to throw that fruit on. Well, that is my highest value card I've got in hand. But I'll wait because I can do it right now anyway. I could do that later. So I've done all that. And with that coin, I can now spend that coin. And it's free for this to get the Fire Bison in play also. Which is just four points. And a way to get food. Although, again, but if I if I ever have a turn where I draw where I roll a bunch of ones, and okay, all I do is drawing cards, I can at least I have more uses for my ones, let's say. But mostly this was for the points, and it was another magic because I had to get so many magic. Right? Okay. Oh, and hey, let's not forget, whenever I play magic, I draw a card. So I just drew two cards. Boom. Um, a holy pilgrim who is magic and folk. When you reach the, a white tower, get a coin and reroll one die per turn. This would have been good to get played earlier. But there's still a bunch of towers along the way. So that's a way to get some more coins for some of this stuff. And, uh, oh, a flying kite barge. A way to move fast. And, um, see, it's worth one point, but three, if I have any Kressar, which is one of the, uh, the, uh, the, the fantasy races in the game, 
I don't have any of those. But uh, if I, I do have two flying, so this actually lets me move two spaces with a two. I am definitely getting this thing built sooner than later. Um, although I need five food and one trade good. Yeah. Okay. So I've still got a four and a six. Hmm. Let's go on ahead and use that four on my brand new uh, musician. Play that funky music, Toad Man. And I get a shell hunter and a trinket wagon. Which, uh... Is that it down there? Or, again, this is probably placeholder art. Uh, all right, so this is nine points if I got a lot of machines. I have not... Do I have any machines? I do not have any machines. So this might be turning into food. Although, it's a way to move with any die and draw a card. That's pretty cool, too. Wow. Okay. So, and then I've still got one more. Six. I could still use it to move, but I'm going to stay. So, I'm just going to use it over here and draw three and keep one. Okay, uh, hey, there's more uh, Nocturnals. This one, if I have Delvers, if I'd been collecting Delvers, I'd probably want to have the Copper Empire Squad. But nope, I'll just take the Fish Folk Cook. All right, because that's another Nocturnal, which I need to do. All righty, boom, done. And I have now played six cards. Remember, I can play a maximum of 12. And I've gone one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. And we're, you know, I just finished round seven. Alrighty, and so, wow! Okay, well, they say, hey, we'll do that, and we won't do that, but we will fight with these. Okay, so first of all, they're going to do another trade, the lowest one available, which is um, this one. Okay, and I'm not doing any trades, so that's fine. They're going to roll their combat. Uh, seven, eight, nine. Now, it would work different for me. I'd put a die here, and it's whatever that die says, plus two. I'd put a die here, it's whatever this says, plus one, and draw a card. But for them, it's just, hey... Add this up, plus, plus, so that's, uh, uh, what, seven, eight, nine. So they just took out this big baddie. And if I want to score those four points, I've got to do it now quick. Because at the end of the round, time, as always, is passing. I've lost that ability to do that trade. We set up camp. Oh, my gosh, they've stood still again. Wow. Okay. And all that, you know, hey, it was to good effect. They're making points over there. And I set up camp there. And let's see what I got. All right, that's more like it. I will show everybody. Hey, everybody, I got one point, whoop de doo but I also got a coin, which I am going to need to uh, get these uh, insect trappers into play. All righty, cool, cool, cool. And we are on to the next round, and I've got some mountains to cross, and am I going to end my turn here after getting... What was it? It was the Holy Pilgrims. If I get these Holy Pilgrims... Oh, man, these are so easy. They're worth no points. But they only take two food. Are they? And no, they only take one food because they're magic. And that means I'll get a coin if I stop there and there and there and there. That's a pretty big deal. That's pretty hot and tempting. Interesting. What am I going to do next, folks? I'm not quite sure. But I think that's where we're going to stop because now you should have a pretty good idea of the overall flow now that we're about halfway through a game of Creature Caravan. If you want to hear what Jenny thought of the game, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the links down in the show notes to go to Final Thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.